Here's a list of all the different gestures that we could be trapping with that. On double tap, all right. On down, on fling. Fling is what I've been calling the swipe. On long press, on scroll. And so on down the line. All right. The activity simply knows that it was touched. It lets the gesture handler deal with the specific kind of touch. And in our case, the only um, touch that we're interested in is a double tap. So that's where we have code. The untouch event for this see if they have any documentation for it. They don't. The untouch event for this looks at the kind of event that has happened, how it was touched, was it a fling, a double tap, or whatever, and calls the appropriate method. So it's important to sort of get the sequence of this because it seems like this happens in two steps because it does. The two steps are as follows. The activity knows that it got touched. And therefore the activity's on touch event gets fired off. The activity can handle some of the touch events, all right? In other words, if we're touching it or we're swiping, we know we want to aim the cannon. So therefore, this on touch event can handle that and can tell the cannon view to go and aim yourself. It gives the event so it knows what position, where you tapped on the screen to know where to aim it. This method, though, can't distinguish between the different kinds of manners in which it was touched. Therefore, it has to ask the gesture detector to handle that. Because we want to handle a double tap different than a single tap. A single tap, we want to simply aim. A double tap, we want to aim and then shoot. So this handles sort of the basic hey, if the activity got touched, I'm going to go and aim the cannon. This one looks more detailed at the specific gesture and says, hey, this gesture was actually a double tap, therefore I'm going to go and, and actually shoot the cannon. Again, notice that in both cases, the event handler still doesn't have a lot of code. We see that over and over again. All right? It's good practice is not to put a lot of code in the event handler. The event handler should simply identify what happened, and, and when I say event handler, I mean event handler or gesture handler, should simply identify what happened and then call the appropriate methods to go and do that. And so notice we call the align or the aim cannon method, and we also call the fire cannon method. So if you're going to do anything with gestures, you'll need to sort of repeat this formula. You know, you're going to have the on-touch event of the activity might be able to do some things, but it will more than likely call the gesture handler, like this one does, or the gesture detector, to go and to fine-tune and to handle specifically the kind of gesture that was made. Let's look at the align cannon method. All right. And that, again, is going to be on the Canon view. Where most of the action is. It gets past that motion event, right? Remember, that motion event has a lot of information about actually what happened 
during this event. So for example, if I touch down here, it not only has the fact that it was touched, but as it, it has the coordinates of where it was touched, which is important, right? Because we want to aim it actually where they touched. We don't simply want to randomly aim it somewhere. We want to aim it in relation to the x, y, and coordinates which it was touched. Therefore, this align cannon method gets past the motion event that just happened. All right? From that motion event, we can identify the point that got touched on the screen. All right? So the point that got touched is represented by a new point object where we grab the x and y coordinates from that event and we create that point object with those x and y coordinates. So remember, the event has any number of properties. Two of those properties are the x and y coordinates. So we call the get x, get y to get the x and y coordinate where the screen was touched and we create a point object with those x and y coordinates. So now, touch point is a point that has x and y coordinates that correspond to exactly where it was tapped and therefore where we need to aim it. All right? We're now going to figure out how much to rotate the cannon because that's, in effect, what we're doing is we're rotating the cannon. As we start out, as we touch, effectively, we're rotating this thingy, the little cannon barrel, so that it points at the point that we were touching at the screen. So to do that, we're going to sort of give it a baseline. We're going to figure out, first of all, how, how tall the screen is. And get the difference between the center of the screen and where it was touched, vertically or horizontally. So, let's say, for sake of argument, that this is 800 pixels tall. coordinate, in other words, from side to side, where I touch isn't really relevant. Actually, it is relevant. I'm mistaken. So let me rephrase that. The first thing we're looking at is the Y coordinate. If we touched exactly in the center of the screen, we would want the cannon barrel to be level. All right? That's what it's doing with this snippet of code. It's finding out the difference between the center position of the screen, which is the screen height divided by 2, and the point at which it was touched. So if we were to touch exactly in the middle of the screen, our touch point's y coordinate would be exactly the screen height divided by 2. All right? If we touched it here, we'll take the screen height and subtract whatever our y coordinate was and probably end up with a negative number. All right? If we touch in the lower half of the screen, we'd probably end up with a positive number. No, the other way around. Since we're counting from the top down, if we touched here, our y coordinate would be less than half of the screen height, so we'd have a positive number here. If we touch down here, our y coordinate would be more than half the screen height. So we'd get a negative number when we do the sub subtraction. We then apply a little bit of trigonometry, which I don't expect you to know. All right? Essentially,
eventually we figure out the angle at which we touched. All right? Using the difference between the X and Y coordinates between where the cannon barrel is and where we touched on the screen. We have a little bit of math in here to keep from dividing by zero. just so that we don't throw an exception if we touch in the wrong place that causes us to divide by zero. Once we know the angle at which we need to rotate this, we do a little bit more gyrations, calculations, and a little more trig, and we determine the position of that barrel. Funny thing is, is the way our eyes work, it looks like this is rotating, right? That's simply a circle plus a little line that goes out, a little rectangle that goes out. And all we're doing is rotating that rectangle. The circle stays constant, but again, the effect taken in whole looks as though that the barrel is rotating of the cannon. So what's relevant in this example? What's relevant in this example, first of all, is that the event, the on-touch event on the activity didn't do this work itself. It identified that it was touched, it identified it needed to aim, and it called the aim method, or the align uh, cannon method, uh, on the cannon view itself. The cannon view gets passed, or this method gets passed, the event, so that we know exactly what happened on what position on the screen. And it gets passed that event as the argument to this function, which is a motion event object, which we can determine the x and y coordinates so that we can do all the fancy trig to determine at what position to rotate the barrel. I don't expect you to know the trick to do that. I do expect you to understand how this event connects to the activity and the activities on touch event. And it connects to review in this manner. When the activity got touched, if it's a certain kind of touch, we're going to call that a line cannon method, and we're going to give it the event object that started all this. From that event object, then, the line cannon method can pluck the x and y coordinates and do some trig to determine at what angle to rotate the barrel. Actually, as I'm noticing this, this returns the angle to rotate it. It doesn't actually go and do the rotation. That'll happen some other place. when the person shoots the cannon. How does that work? Well, first event that gets fired is the activities on touch event. So the activity knows it got touched. And it knows sort of the kind of touch that it got. 
Was it a touch or is it a swipe? And, B, and if it's either of those two, it goes and it does the align method to aim the cannon. For everything else, though, to know, for example, was it double tapped? It calls the gesture detector. And the gesture detector has code in it to do certain things based on the kind of gesture that happened, whether it was double tapped or swiped or whatever. In this case, the only thing that we're interested in is the double tap. This on touch event will sort of delegate to the appropriate function. And the only function that we've written code for, so the only function that we're going to do anything for, is the on double tap. The simple gesture listener class has an on touch event, an on single tap event, an on fling event. It has all those events, but we're not writing any code for them, which is effectively means we don't care about them. This gesture listener doesn't care about those gestures. It only cares about the double tap listener or a double tap event. And what does it do? Well, it's going to fire the cannon. Now, to fire the cannon, it needs to know where to fire it at. And therefore, we give the at fire cannonball method, we give it the event. So we can do a similar thing as we did when we aimed the cannon. One thing I don't like about this particular example is that whenever they double tap on it, in addition to firing the cannon, they also aim the cannon first. Not because of this. This code doesn't kick in, but we'll see in the fire cannonball event how it calculates um, and, and re-aims the, the cannon. All right, let's look at the fire cannonball event. First thing it does is it looks to see if they've already shot a, a cannonball. So this isn't Space Invaders when you can just hold the button down and shoot a, a, a repeating stream of cannons. So if there's already a cannonball moving across the screen, it's going to do nothing. We then call the Align Cannon event, which is the same event that we looked at a minute ago or the align cannon method, and we give it the event the same way that we did a minute ago. Which means, in other words, before we shoot it, we aim it. So tapping it will aim it, and also shooting it will aim it. This, I would say, is a flaw in this program, all right? It's a flaw in this program because a line cannon actually does two things, all right? A line cannon, and I think I was mistaken about one thing I said a second ago about it not actually aiming it, because it does. Setting the barrel end X and Y is what actually aims it. This align cannon does two things. It gives the angle on which the cannon is aimed, and it aligns the cannon to wherever it was touched. Those should actually be, in my mind, two separate functions, because those are two separate things. There is no mechanism, for example, to shoot this without aligning it first. Right? And in my mind, if I wanted to incorporate that into this code, I should be able to do that fairly easily. But I'm not, because they've sort of bundled up the aligning of the 
cannon's barrel with the determination of what the angle is at. So, when I fire the cannonball, I might not want to align it. But I do need to know the angle at which it's aligned so that I can make the cannonball move. However, because those two things are bound up into one method, telling me the angle that it's aimed at and aligning it are both in the same method, I can't do one without the other then. So when I double tap, I aim the cannon as well. Once I determine the angle, and again, I also have to aim the cannon because that's the way that method works. I can then do, again, some trig to calculate the velocity. In other words, the change in x that this is going to go versus the change in y that this is going to go. I set the cannonball on screen to indicate that there is now a cannonball on screen. I increment the number of shots and I play the audio for it being fired. talked about today and preview where we're going to go next with this. We talked about the custom view today. In other words, our main XML only contains the one view, the canon view that we've created. So we can create a canon view that has every visual aspect of the view along with the behavior of that. Again, and we can extend the framework to have our own view as opposed to using the views that are built into the Android framework. We use a mix of the activities on touch event and a gesture detector to handle the gestures. There's two gestures that we're interested in. The touch gesture, which includes the sliding, and the double tap gesture. The activity knows when it was touched. And if it's touched in one of these two ways, it aligns a cannon. For everything else, it goes and asks the gesture handler to go and do its thing. That's also a slight inconsistency that I might code. I might let the gesture handler do all the handling of the gestures as opposed to have some of the gestures handled by this and some of the gestures handled by the gesture detector. It seems a more consistent way uh, to do it. But at any rate, the way this works is some of the gestures are handled, the aiming is handled, the touching and sliding aiming is handled, by the on-touch event. However, the on-touch event isn't able to distinguish a double tap and all that. For that, it has to call the gesture detector. And the gesture detector kicks in and um, goes and fires the cannonball, uh, provided it's double tapped. So some of the gestures handled by the touch event. The rest of them get handled when the touch event calls the gesture detector and says, hey, you go and handle this touch. And again, since we've only written code for the on double uh, tap, that's the only gesture we're interested in, that's the only gesture where anything is going to get done. When we call this on touch event, 
the framework will make sure that the double tap event or double tap method gets called when in fact it's double tapped. In both cases, we pass the event as an argument to those methods, so the methods know exactly where it got touched. So to fire the cannon or to aim the cannon, we need to know exactly on the screen where it got touched. Those then do their thing, either by rotating the barrel um, or by rotating the barrel and then firing the cannon. Now, let's think of everything that's going on in this application. All right. A couple things are going on. Number one, the time is passing. Right? And that's getting incremented. Number two, the blocker is going back and forth and the targets are moving. And number three, code is waiting for me to touch or swipe or double tap. That's a lot going on. through the use of what are called threads. All right? The idea is something like this. As we're drawing all the stuff and we're drawing the movement, we're drawing the cannonball and all that, we want to make sure that the application can respond to any user interface thing. We don't want the application bogged down doing this other stuff, like redrawing the screen, so that when I press the cannon to shoot it or to aim it, there's like a little bit of lag. All right. The application wants to be in what well, needs to be able to handle both the fact that these things are going on and the fact that the user might be interacting with the application. And that will get into what is called threading. All right? Remember, a single process on the computer can only do one thing at a time. Therefore, we couldn't have this application be drawing the screen and waiting for the user to touch it as a thing, as a single processing thread. 